Um, so the, the, um, the size of the house that you lived in uh, reflected your status. And it was very carefully actually measured. And of course, the, the, we were talking about round roths, the little ring forts. And the ones that have survived, of course, are the large ones. But there would have been thousands, tens of thousands of them uh, around. The, the, the ones that just survived and we see the traces of them would be s local rees of thuas. They would have been fishers of a thua. Um, but they were, very, they were regulated and everything was done by, by diameter. So it was the diameter of the, the so it tells you again that it was Amshunathuha, it was the time when the ring forts were there. So the ring, these ring forts, did, little, little things didn't suddenly spring out of nowhere. That was the way of life for millennia, for thousands of years. Um, and it was very highly regulated how, how big of a, uh, a, fort, a ring fort you could have, uh, depending on your, on your status. Um, anyway, so you can see why th they would use the word huts or or uh, bo to identify somebody. You might say, well, why would they? Because it describes where you're at. You're a person from, you know, from from this little, that little hut. Um, so then, uh, you were a, a mid bo by virtue of the fact that your father was an Okara. Now, I suspect that the, and, and by the way, the word Ara appears all the time. It's, it's kind of, and even today, a, a minister in the Irish government is called an Ara. It's, it's a guard, it's, a, it's somebody, it's a responsible person, it's, it has a, a, a whole wide meaning, so that you'll see it used a lot. Uh, but it denotes somebody that is in, uh, as responsible has a responsibility for other things you know you're, you're it's it means care so you're you're in the care you're you're a caretaker you have care of something whether it's physical or other people and it has of course privileges and some obligations so the word ara a i r e uh, yes a i r e is a very common uh, is, is, it's a it's a word that's used a great deal in uh, in irish um, uh, sociology, social social structure. So, so the the word okara and boara, and then as you go on up the the, the line, uh, there's lots of other kinds of aras as well. But um, the we'll, we'll start with the well. There, there's probably going to be three generations uh, involved in this progression from Midwa to an Okara to a Boara, which corresponds exactly with the Gilfi, the, the, the kind of the enlarged, the enlar larger family. And then there's a slightly larger one than that called a Dervfina, which is Derv uh, der actually meaning truth, believe it or not. It's like the true Fini. Fini is kind of a, um, a clan. It's, it's the nearest thing that the Irish have to a clan. But their clan concept is is quite different to the Scottish and it's the European because it's not it's not quite so tied to an, a single ancestor they can take people in and do all kinds of things with them it's it, it actually has more to do with the land than than the the uh, the bloodline or the the DNA um, <clears throat> so which again emphasizes how important and how totally identified the whole structure was with the land um, anyway, the, um, the, the uh, well, I'll read it to you. A young man of, say, 14 was known, known as the Midba, a status he would share with his brothers and sisters. By the way, it was not uh, just matrilinear, and it certainly was not primogenitor or any of that stuff. In other words, um, males and females were, by and large, equal. Now, there were certain things that males dominated, of course, than females, but nevertheless, there was rights were pretty well universal. And sisters of all his first cousins, until he moved up the ladder, so that a a young midba would find himself with a clatter of siblings, and if he had, if his father had four or five brothers or sisters and all that crowd, so he could have quite a hunk of of um, of 
compete or fellow midbox. So what's the spelling of that word? M I D B O H. Midbox. Well, it would be T H B O B O H. It would be T H. But you see, we don't have B O T. We don't have an H in the in the. Yeah. So it's difficult when you translate it. You have to do the best you can into English. But 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 uh, mid is still mid, like in yeah. Mid, mid bah. but the bah is a house. It's a bah. <laughs> it's, it, it's, 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 it's that's so that it's identified with his status in that he actually could have a house. house. Yeah, well, it, it, it's the smallest. It's it, well, yeah, it's kind of the smallest, uh, next above a doghouse kind of thing. But he actually uh, gets to have a house if he if he can have one or a hut of his own. So he's no longer he's dependent upon. His parents and his uh, and his elder siblings, but he theoretically could have a bahon of his own. It seems to be what the idea was. But just so you understand, the this layer, this bunch of people. Now remember, this is within a a, a gelfine. You know, it's within three generations. It's not means this is not a status that's it's, it's it's repeated of course all around the Thua, the parish the the the, the, local, the, the little little kingdom whatever but we're talking about within your own clan so there could be quite a few of them now um the uh I'm telling you about the highest rank among the uh non noble classes uh was the boar so he's at the top and I'll explain to him in a minute who he was uh, before the Milbo, in line for that status, would be his father and mother, his uncles and aunts, his uncles and his aunts, who would who would still be known as Okara. Now I take it's usually written down as O C A I R A. I actually take that to mean Og. Uh, Ogara, in other words, like a young Arab. Uh, he, it's 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 one who is not the boara. There usually is only one boara, the 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 guy at the top, um, who was usually the grandfather. So now, if you take the next layer up, the okara, that would be, if you're looking at it from the perspective of the 14-year-old kid, it would be his father and all that generation, all his uncles and aunts, all that crap. Now they all stand between him and the top the top guy. Who uh, it would be the the Bo Ara? So you can see that the Bo Ara is quite an important person. He's somebody who undoubtedly is the elder, one of the elders of the of the uh, of the clan, by necessity, because you don't get there just by being, you know, tough or getting elected or anything. It's 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 a, it's a, it's a progressive thing. Um, so then. What would ha what would happen after that is uh, so that well how do I say in life of stars and would be still known well his grandfather grandpa his grandmother or grandfather would be the current boar the path to upward mobility lay in land ownership but the early acquisition of a share in a plough team a lime kiln a millstone or a barn helped. Because a boar was expected to eventually own all of these things. So, even though you still had pretty strong impediments between you and the boar, you could still do a lot of things. If you, if, by various ways, you could uh, start owning maybe a small share in a plow team. So you can see there was great value put on the uh, implements of food production. Um, now. If you, if you survived your midbah years, the reason I say that is because it's from those ranks that the Ri of the Tua drew his fighting men. So you can see there was a natural tendency to, for these, for that, those numbers to get weeded out a little bit. And women died in childbirth and you know, there was all kinds of things that happened. So, so natural selection kind of um, was involved. Um, so there was that and the number of people that was in your group, so to speak. And that, the extent to which you moved up depended upon how, 
how popular your father or grandmother had been with the ladies. Just a little tongue-in-cheek there. So that, obviously, if you were lucky enough to have a father that nobody really liked very much, didn't, chances are you didn't have a lot of siblings, but if he was a very popular chieftain or whatever, and, man, he just got around, then you, you probably weren't going to do too good. <laughs> now, that's the individuals, the people. Now, land, how is land measured? Well, it's very simple, actually, because land in ancient Ireland was, was measured not by a unit of area, such as a modern acre, but by the grass of three cows. And I, you still hear that expression, the grass of a cow or the grass, you know. The, 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 uh, and when you think about it, it's very clever, because, see, different land was more valuable than other land. 